I bought a big bag of coleslaw mix. It's just shredded cabbage. Okay, now these can go in a bin and on the shelf. So I thought that I was going to rehydrate these just a few days after I put these in these bags. Uh, but it's been 10 or 11 weeks now. It's June 2nd and I put these in here on March 18th. They went into the freeze dryer on March 16th and came out on the 18th and I put them in these bags. So this is kind of the worst case storage that you can do. Uh, the Ziplocs, these are freezer ones so they're thicker, but they're still not anywhere close to what a Mylar bag would give you for protection. So I don't know how these are going to do. Hopefully they're still fine after that long. Um, we'll find out. And I'm going to do a quick test on the oxygen absorber to see if it's still functioning. So in fact, we'll get that out first. So what I have here to help me with that, I've got a plastic container and I've got a toothpick on here so that'll allow water to get under there. And I'm going to take the oxygen absorber out and tape it to the side real quick. Put that on there. Well, it doesn't have to be that quick. And then I'll put water a little bit on here and uh, put something on here to hold it down. I could just use a cup as long as I'm careful and don't wiggle it while it's on there. Then I'm going to rehydrate the beef with some canned beef broth. So, we will get this going first. So I'm not worried too much about how much oxygen it absorbs, so how high the water goes, just the fact that it does. So I'm going to set this aside very carefully, and then I'll put the weight on top of it, and we'll come back and check it. Now, we'll get these into here. Let's check. Steel feels the same, looks the same, smells the same as I put them in there, so that's a good sign. So very, very little odor of any kind. Kind of typical of most freeze-dried. All right. So we'll let that uh, rehydrate for a while and then check it out. And it's fairly thin, so it shouldn't take long. Some of the little edge pieces uh, should just take a few seconds, really. But we'll give it a few minutes at least. Oh, that's actually quite good already. Might be good heated up for a sandwich or just this way. Some Miracle Whip and cheese and things. Okay, we'll come back and check that in a while. Now the coleslaw, again, we put this into the freeze dryer on March 16th and came out on March 18th. And now it's June 2nd. Uh, so this I want to try rehydrating with a little bit of water and pickle juice to see if we can make it, and then add Miracle Whip and things, and see if we can make it uh, kind of a coleslaw. We'll check that out. So I'm going to add some ice water to this. And I'll put this in the refrigerator to rehydrate. And this might not work for anything besides soups and things. I do not know. So we'll come back and check that in a little while, or it'll come back. Okay, so it's just been a few minutes. Oh, that's looking pretty good. That would make a good sandwich already. But I think we could heat it up with some cheese and things too, it would be great. I'm going to heat this a bit. Okay, so I warmed up the beef a bit in the microwave, just to get it, uh, I don't know, 120, 140. Just nice and warm. Nice and flexible. Looks great. Well, that comes apart nicely. Mm. I'm going to try a bit of Parmesan cheese on it. All right. So that works very, very well. It rehydrated very well. Yeah, 
that's back to what it was before. It'd make good, well, anything you want to use it for. Sandwiches, just a snack. Doesn't really matter. These thin slices worked out very well. Taxi! Yeah, try that. Oh, it's just falling apart, which is what it should do. You have to kind of scoop under it. What do you think? Want to try another one? Mm -hmm. I don't know what else I could tell you. It came out as good as it went into the freeze dryer. Worked out well. I'm quite happy with it. Okay, this is just some pickle juice and Miracle Whip. I'm going to toss some of this coleslaw mix pieces in there and see what that does as it's rehydrated. I don't hold out a lot of hope, really. I think it's going to be kind of mushy, yucky, like cabbages after it's been frozen. I think it would still be good for some soups and things. I'm not very confident with making coleslaw out of it. And of course, this is way too much dressing for that, a little amount. But I want to try it just to see how the cabbage parts hold up. I'm not really worried about it being too much sauce right now. So I'm going to squish that down into there so that it's all under the liquid and refrigerate that for a few minutes and then test it also. So I think that's kind of a fail for coleslaw. Though this one has more potential than this one, I think. Um, I would give it a, another try. Maybe cut the pieces up smaller so they're not as big. So right now, it looks useful for some kind of soups or stuff like that that you want to use cabbage in. Uh, the carrots are rehydrating just fine. They get, they get back to crunchy. But the other is not. The other is more like sauerkraut kind of texture now. I'll give it a more time, see if it changes. But right now, what would you use this cabbage for? Um, yeah. I mean, it does have some crunch to it again. So there's still some potential that it'll work out. I'll have to come back and check it later. Because I don't mind the translucency as long as it's got some crunch to it for a coleslaw. So for now, I'm going to say it's not great, but we'll give it some more time and I'll check it another time. I was editing the video for the freeze drying of, of the thin beef and the coleslaw mix. And I was looking at this, it looked much brighter and greener on the video. And I'm wondering if that's just the video or were the ones that were properly bagged going to look different than these because you need to protect your food from light also not just the moisture and oxygen but light because light can activate some of the enzymes and and cause changes in the food that's part of why you use a steel can or a mylar bag that excludes the light or if you put them in clear containers you store them in the dark well, these have been in our uh, kitchen for 10 or 11 weeks and sunlight even hits here. So I'm going to check this out and look at it real quick. And then I'm going to just close it back up and the oxygen absorber should be still good. And I'll show you the test that we were doing earlier. And I'm very happy to say that the oxygen absorber is still functioning. It pulled water up into there. So we know that it's still absorbing oxygen. I don't know how much, but it's still working after 10 weeks in a Ziploc. So I'm going to just cut off just the seal area that I sealed. And this is where I said many times that I like to get that seal real high on here. So if I want to open it, take some out, I can reseal it in the same bag. So that way I can cut off just the seal. So, oh, I should have something to set these on. I'm going to just use this paper towel. And we'll see if there's any noticeable difference between them. It might be just the same. 
Okay, that looks considerably different. Wow, that's considerably different. That's what I remembered and that's what I was seeing on the video. Look how brownish these are in comparison. The greens are faded, the whites are slightly brownish. That's quite a significant difference. Let's see if I can get them very, very close to each other. Well, I guess I could take some out of the bag. I just don't want to mix them in. Okay, that's exciting. I had to bring these back down to the basement with the freeze dryer. There's the kitchen, the lighting. I just couldn't seem to show this. So hopefully this will show up well now. The one that had been properly stored is much nicer color, nice greens. The carrots are a little bit better color. Everything's a little bit better. This looks slightly brownish by comparison. Yeah, so it makes quite a difference when you store them the right way. I think this really shows the importance of light resistant and moisture resistant containers. I'm going to try rehydrating some of this and see if there's a difference. And this may not come out any better, the results but it certainly is starting out better and that's an important piece to consider. Now this is just some ice water, nothing else in it. Now I'll get the other samples out that I did. So here's the samples from yesterday, even just starting. <laughs> even right now that looks considerably different. Interesting. Okay, so this is had overnight and the texture is not terrible. It reminds me of the texture of like sauerkraut. And there's certainly nothing wrong with it. It tastes like boiled cabbage. So this would be just fine in soups and things. I think I wouldn't have any problem with that. Yeah, it has a good crunch to it. And I think even coleslaw now might be okay. Dry it off a bit and then put some dressing on it. And I think it would be okay. It would pass. And then this is the other one and it didn't rehydrate really as well. It's, it's edible, it's fine, but it's not what I'd want for coleslaw. So this one has a better chance. So you can make coleslaw out of it. It's just a relatively poor quality coleslaw out of it. So it'd be like mom's cooking. Well, maybe not your mom. So you definitely could make a coleslaw out of this but it's just going to be a slightly soggier coleslaw, but it would still be coleslaw. So it still, I think, has some potential. And this is going to be an improved version of that. Okay, so I'll bring this back in view. So I figured out that if I just put a heavy cup on top of that would hold it down. So I added a drop of green food coloring so I could see the water levels easier. It did in fact pull water up into there. The oxygen absorber was still functioning. I have no idea how much it would pull out still and I wasn't really worried about that. The fact that it was still functioning was what I was concerned with. However, even if oxygen had been absorbed as it got into here, the moisture wasn't, so the moisture was still affecting this, and the light was. Um, so yeah, it's all bad. But the oxygen absorber was still doing its job, even in this bag after 10 or 11 weeks. Let's see if I can get a line on this. Okay. So with the line on there, we'll be able to fill it up to that line and then find out how much more uh, is missing so therefore how much oxygen was absorbed and again I'm not worried about the total amount I just want to know that some was so I'm real happy to see that that was still working okay. this has been in there for a couple days now and it seems to at least have slowed down at that line. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. We'll fill it up to here and then measure it, um, weigh it, 
and then find out how much more it can fit because with water it's one gram is one cubic centimeter so we'll tell how much oxygen that absorbed out of this container and we can do the math to find out was that a hundred percent of the oxygen or was it just how much that oxygen absorber could still absorb either way i'm really happy to see that it was still absorbing oxygen after being in a ziplock for 11 weeks because a ziplock is not very good for blocking oxygen or moisture so we're going to go ahead and get rid of this and you can see the lines so that now it's the top line of course that was the bottom line line when it was upside down but it absorbed that much of the oxygen or oxygen out of here We'll weigh it at this point and then add that much more to find out how much it changed. 555. Now we'll find out how much it is to get to the top. Yeehaw! Okay, now I'm not going to go until it has a bulge at the top, the meniscus there because it would have been slightly in by the time I put the container in there. So I'm, I'm going to use that number. So 711. So the difference between those. So with my crude measuring and lack of scientific equipment, uh, this is what I came up with. This container is filled with 711 cubic centimeters of water right now. The oxygen absorber had absorbed approximately 156 cc's, which is about 21.9%. So it's within the margin of error for the equipment that I have to show that it actually absorbed all of the oxygen out of there. Anyway, so it may have been able to absorb more oxygen than that. I don't know but it apparently was still able to absorb at least another 156 and this was rated at 300 uh, and it had been in that ziplock for 11 weeks to me that's really really good to know that it was still functioning so here's what the cabbage looks like a couple days later after being moistened and left in the refrigerator Again, the one that was in the Mylar bag looks much, much better. The other one looks kind of like a little bit more like sauerkraut or something. The texture is actually pretty decent. It's definitely much crunchier than sauerkraut would be. It's, um, it would make an adequate coleslaw, I think. But I think I would plan on using it in soups and things. You could definitely still use it for some kind of coleslaw. And this one is definitely better than the one that was in the Ziploc. In a pinch, I could use this for coleslaw. That's the end of that one. And hopefully that shows up the differences. The lighting is terrible here, but I'm not going to move it right now. That's what we've got. I've started a second channel, Cool Reports On The Go, for things that aren't necessarily freeze drying. Please yeah. consider checking it out.